How's it going guys? Squeegee Dino Toy here. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to add a post-processing effect to our Skater XL map. So here in Unity I have my tutorial level all laid out. This was created using the Builder Asset tool that I released, but you can achieve this on any map very easily. We're going to come over here to our scene settings that we should have created in a previous tutorial. If you don't have a scene settings, please go back a couple tutorials. This is a pretty important step to creating your X XL map in general. So once we're on our scene settings, we're going to go ahead and add component and we're going to search for a post process layer and we're going to go ahead and create that. It's going to generate a camera and a post process layer script. The trigger is going to be set to this. We're going to set the layer. Now, by default, we will not have a post-processing layer. So we need to come up here to layer. We need to add layer. We're going to go to layer 10. Now, the reason that we use layer 10 is so that the post-processing that we create in our Unity editor will interact with the Fabo settings mod, which a lot of people in the community use, and they get upset if your post-processing on your map isn't editable. And by putting this on layer 10, we can actually use Babo settings to change the actual post-processing in-game. The next thing we're going to do is set this layer to the post-processing layer we just created. And, of course, we're going to set the entire scene settings also to the post-processing layer. Now we're going to come down, we're going to add another component, and this time we're going to add a post-process volume. Now I'm going to set this to global, but you can actually use these volumes to set certain areas to different post-processing effects. For instance, if I didn't set this to global and I adjusted the volume size, I could make this area have a different post-processing effect from this area. I can go into volumes more in the future, but for now we're just going to use a global post-processing volume, seeing this is a very small map, and there's no reason to use two different volumes. We're going to create a new profile, and by default it will create a profile with the name of the scene, and then we can just go ahead and add an effect. I like to test it with a vignette effect, it makes it very easy to visualize if the post-processing has taken effect or not. And as we can see in our camera preview, and if we hop into the game view, the post-processing effect is absolutely working. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this, and we'll just go ahead with a couple, with a small couple adjustments that I like to have on by default. Ambient occlusion is my starter, I think that everybody should be using this, it's a beautiful effect and it takes a little bit of work to get dialed in but it adds a lot of depth to our map what ambient occlusion is is it's adding these contact shadows where light is being reduced from two corners being close together a really good way we can visualize what ambient occlusion is doing is by taking a look at the contact shadows that will be generated by these two cubes being close to each other as you can see, without the ambient occlusion on, it's just sort of two flat, the boxes each cast their own independent flat shadows. But if we go ahead and take a look in the game, you can very easily see what that ambient occlusion is doing by generating these contact shadows here where the light would be occluded from two objects being close together. This has to do with indirect lighting and um, we can talk more about indirect lighting in the future in a mapping tutorial, or in a lighting tutorial, but just kind of try and get a feel for what this does as you can see this this uh, occlusion hap this light occlusion happening when the objects are close together and it's really prevalent in corners like this so this is probably one of the best effects that you can be using in your post processing and I think everybody should probably be using at this point in the game another quick effect that I like to add is a little bit of color grading now this is kind of up to for debate some people would prefer we not add this to the map but this is another good reason it's important to make sure that this works with Babo because if people don't like your color grading they can disable it so um, you can just go ahead and pop that into aces and it gives it a bit more of a filmic look and uh, from there on you can just do whatever you want and really get the visual effect that you're looking for you know we can create kind of a film grain effect unfortunately it's not an animated grain um, that takes a little more work to do. But anyway, feel free to play around with this, do what you want with it. 
and experiment with these effects. I'm not going to go into depth on what every single one does, but you can get a pretty good idea of it just from messing around in the scene with the game camera enabled. And that takes me to the final step, which is we need to, before exploring our map, we need to go to our scene settings and we need to uncheck this camera. We don't need to delete it, but we need to uncheck it. Now your lighting will change as it unrenders our camera, but if we go into game, as you can see, there's no more display rendering. This of course is important because otherwise Skater XL will try to use that camera as the in-game camera and the amount of times I've forgotten to uncheck that uh, is embarrassing and it can be incredibly frustrating. So try and get in the habit of checking your game tab before you export to make sure that you haven't left a camera enabled on the map. And that's it for post-processing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know in the description or uh, in the comments if you have any questions and feel free to DM me on Discord if you have issues that you'd like help resolving. Thanks so much guys, have a great day.